Well, uh, good evening, everybody. It's uh, Tuesday, 19th of October 2021. The time is precisely 5.30. And so can I welcome you all to this meeting of the Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee, which is being held via Microsoft Teams. Um, you'll be aware that we're required to read out the privacy statement. Um, this meeting will be recorded and made available to view via the Council's website, except for discussions involving confidential or exempt items. Therefore, the images and audio of those individuals speaking will be publicly available to all via the recording on the Council's website at www.cofili.gov.uk. Bear with me while I scroll down. Thank you all. So moving on to uh, agenda item one, and that is to receive apologies for absence. Um, Mark, I think we've had some apologies for absence. Could, could you could you let us know who we've got? Yeah, we've had apologies from Councillor Cushing, Councillor Goff, and Councillor Oliver, Chair. Okay, thanks. Members, are there any other apologies tonight at all? I, I take that silence as 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 a no. But um, as as we are probably aware, Councillor Philippa Leonard has, has isn't able to get in on Teams this evening. Um, she's stuck in a traffic jam, uh, so she can be a, a joining us on on the telephone. So no, I have move on. Apologies, Chair. Oh, I, I recognise that voice. Yeah, someone just posted that there were apologies from me, but I haven't given any. I'm here. Oh, there we are, Jess. OK, you're on the list there. I've got them on there. So um, no, if you'd like to see you. OK, thanks very much. Scrub those apologies from the record, please. Um, so moving on to uh, agenda item two, uh, it's de declarations of interest. Councillors and officers are reminded of their personal responsibility to declare any personal and or prejudicial, prejudicial interest in respect of any items of business on this agenda. In accordance with the Local Government Act 2000, the Council's Constitution and the Code of Conduct for both councillors and officers. Can I ask, are there any declarations of interest? I don't see any hands up members, so I'm assuming there aren't any declarations of interest, which enables me now to move on, agenda, move on to agenda item three, which is to approve and sign the following minutes, which were the Housing and Re Regeneration Scrutiny Committee held on the 7th of September 2021. So we'll just go through these minutes and checking for accuracy page by page. Um, page one. Page two. Page three. Page four. Page five and a couple of lines on page six. Are there any points of accuracy anybody wants to raise on this tonight? Um, again, again, silence. Um, can I have a, a mover for these, please? I move. recommend them. Jess, can I move? Yes, thank yeah. you. Oh. And I second. second. Councillor Williams, I chair. I second. Okay, thanks. You'll know the members are asked to vote on this recommendation and the um, accessing the forms ballot, which will appear on your screen shortly. As you are aware, you either click on for, against or abstain and then finally click on submit vote. And I think that's coming up on our screens now. Um, I can't vote on my phone, so just to say for. Thank Bernard. you, Philippa. I don't know if we've recorded that one, thanks. That's noted, Chair. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's carried, Chair. Ten votes for, including the the verbal um, vote from Councillor Leonard. That's great. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Mark, uh, yet again, as I always do, I omitted to do the roll call. Do you want to do the roll call at this juncture before we move on to agenda item four? Yep. OK, Chair. Councillor yeah, apologies Adams. for that. Present. Councillor Bevan. Councillor Hillbury. Uh, I'm here. 
Councillor Hardin. Present. Councillor Higgs. Councillor Kirby. Here. Councillor Leonard. Here. Councillor Owen. Present. Councillor Price. Councillor Ridgewell. Present now. Councillor Sargent. I'm here. Councillor Williams. Present. And Councillor Zaplatinsky. Present. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Mark. Uh, moving on to agenda item four, which is to consider consideration of any matters referred to this committee in accordance with the calling procedures. Mark, do we have any uh, call-ins this evening? No, we don't, Chair. OK, fine. Thanks very much indeed. OK, so we now move on to item five, which is the Housing and Rege Regeneration Scrutiny Committee forward work programme. Can I, can I pass it over to you now, Mark, please? Thank you, Chair. Members are asked to uh, consider the forward work programme alongside the Cabinet work programme as appended to the report and uh, to suggest any changes um, or additions that, um, that they think um, could be included within the parameters of the committee. Um, the next meeting of your committee is uh, on the 30th of uh, November. Um, so if members are happy, I would like to seek uh, approval to publish the um, Housing and Regeneration Scrutiny Committee Forward Work Programme um, onto the Council's website. Thank you very much. Thanks, Mark. Um, do we have any observations or comments on that, members? OK, thanks very much indeed. So can I have somebody to move the recommendation, please? I'll move that, Chair. Councillor Adam. Thanks, Mike. Thanks, Mike. Yep. Yeah. Um, and a seconder. I second, Chair. Councillor Williams. Thank you very much indeed. Um, so uh, again, the voting form will appear on your screen shortly. Again, Philippa Leonard here. I vote for. Thank you. Thanks, Philippa. Yeah, that's carried, Chair. 10 for, um, no abstentions and no against. And that's including the verbal um, vote from Councillor Leonard. Great. Thanks very much, Mark. OK, thank you. So, so moving on to um, agenda item six, which is to receive and consider the following cabinet reports, which was the, the, re the regeneration board project proposals 15th of September 2021. Did that did that come forward at all? No, that wasn't no. brought forward, Chair. OK. Thank you. Then we, we can move on then to um, agenda proper now. And um, we're on agenda item seven, which is the town centre management group. And if I can hand over to uh, uh, Councillor Lenny Stenner, who's the cabinet member for performance economy and enterprise. Lenny, over to you. Thank you, Chair. The purpose of this report is to seek scrutiny's views on the proposed revision to the format of the town centre management group prior to consideration by cabinet. The revision, the revision of this group is to encourage businesses and other stakeholders' attendance and involvement in the future development of our towns. It is noted in the summary of the report that the number of active Chamber of Trades retail groups has reduced since 2012 and that there has not been an appropriate level of business representation and engagement via the Town Centre Management Group. In order to address this, Having regard for the available resources and the need to support post-COVID recovery, it is proposed to change the format and operation of the meetings to encourage increased business and other stakeholders' attendance and engagement at meetings. It is suggested that the meetings become a breakfast or evening event uh, that focus on information sharing and networking opportunities. By holding events outside of the working day, business owners and representatives are more likely to attend without impacting upon the operation of their business. The terms and conditions of the group will need to be amended in line with the proposals 
and a draft is included in an, in an appendix to this report. The recommendations are shown at 3.1 and 3.2 of the report, and they are that members uh, consider the proposal to trial an alternative model and recommend to Cabinet a 12-month trial period with the revised format of the Town Centre Management Group and that a further report outlining the results of the trial period be considered after the trial period ends, allowing a decision to be taken at that stage on the preferred model of delivery. Thank you. Thanks, Leonid. Um, I believe we've got Mr. Alan Dallimore here this evening, who's going to present the report. Okay. Chair. Yeah, can I just add uh, um, some of the facts that uh, Alina just mentioned? If you just bear with me. Yeah, it's interesting to note, isn't it, that the Town Centre Management Group has been running now and operational since 1996 with the current terms of reference revised in 2012. Uh, 2012, that's nearly a decade old and we do believe now that it's time for an overall freshen up to reflect our town centres and how they operate currently. Now, the new approach outlined in the report is to be modelled on the successful business engagement events that we were holding before lockdown. They were predominantly breakfast events held um, with the business community, and they were really focused on information sharing, but also maybe as importantly on networking as well. There were opportunities for business to network, uh, to get to know each other and to bond as a business community. And we see that being a main part of the idea of bringing the revised town centre management group proposal forward, that the business community get to know each other in each of the town centres. Uh, one thing I would like to, to go into is the sort of potential content of the meetings. Um, we mentioned that it's going to be about information sharing, and I think there's an opportunity here for the businesses to learn from these events. You know, there'll be probable consultation on strategic documents that impact upon the town centre. Um, there'll be partner organisation initiatives such as those to reduce or combat retail crime. We may be bringing regeneration projects forward um, for local businesses to have their say as a consultee. There's opportunity for presentations on training and development opportunities that we've already undertaken with the wider business community in the successful business events that I've already mentioned. Um, several of them have been really successful, including one on cybersecurity and technology support for businesses. There'll also be the opportunity for presentation from organisations offering various support mechanisms for town centre businesses and we hope that there'll be some connectivity as well with the Caffili Business Club. Um, we'll be inviting some keynote speakers to the events from the Caffili Business Club um, to add value to those events. As um, was mentioned, we're looking to hold these twice a year for each of the five town centres at locations in the town centre to improve accessibility. And we're looking with morning and evening events. And I think we'll start off chair with one of each in the first year to see which works best and then take it from there. So as was mentioned, the format is seen as a pilot and it'll be experimental for 12 months starting in the new calendar year, probably now. Um, and just a note as well to those members of scrutiny that the membership um, for those people who are attending presently, they'll still be invited. You know, the Chamber of Trade will still be invited, the community and the town council, the police, local county borough councillors. And um, we feel that just the focus needs to change a little to the to the business community, as has already been expressed. You know, we we lost the the initiative somewhat in terms of our dialogue with the business community at the town centre management group events. Um, we was finding that the business community, often because they weren't aligned to a constituted body, weren't able to attend. And we want to reflect on that and change that so they feel welcome and can attend these events and, and gain from them. I didn't want to add much more than that, Che. Yeah, um, thanks, Alan. A, 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 a very comprehensive response to it. And um, 
uh, I certainly see huge benefits coming from this. But but let's hear members' views on this. Um, we start. So so um, the debate is open, um, and uh, I think the first hand up was uh, Colin Ellsbury, Councillor Ellsbury. That's Colin? correct, Chair. Thanks. Hi. Yeah. Thanks, Chair. Hi, Alan. How are you doing? Um, Thank you very much for the report. Uh, first thing, um, it's not your fault, I know, or it's not really a major issue. However, um, in the um, list of consultees, it's, it's got myself, James and Steve down as Sim James Ward members. Uh, I'm not sure when we moved, um, and I don't think uh, Barbara uh, would be very happy with that, but uh, we seem to swap wards. So just uh, this one little point over there. Um, the other thing is, um, obviously, you're talking about the calendar year, so I'm talking, I'm assuming you're talking from January. Correct. Okay. What, uh, are these going to be via Zoom or Teams at first? Because at the moment we would be told we can't have face-to-face -face meetings in the chamber or in meeting rooms and things like that. It is difficult, isn't it? And we would much prefer these to be in-person events just because of the networking opportunities. But yeah. I think if we do look to launch these from um, January onwards, then in all likelihood the first several will be held via you know those digital platforms okay you know fine, it's one right. thing that we can look at it, there is an opportunity that we can look at delaying these events until such time as we have the all clear with covid to, to meet up in person but we don't know how far away that is and what i don't want to do realistically is stop this process going forward because some of the benefits that it could bring to the business community in particular in these difficult times then I'd rather them start earlier rather than later. Yeah, no, I agree. Um, we haven't had a town centre manager meeting since April mm. 2019. Um, and uh, yeah, I know I welcome it. I welcome the report. I welcome that we're getting back on board with this. Um, I don't think we can wait till the restrictions are lifted because we, you know, have no idea at the moment. It seems to get worse, not better. Um, so yeah, no, well, we're very supportive of this. And uh, unfortunately, though, we don't have a a town, uh, a chamber of trade in Caffili anymore. We don't have any representatives or independent traders association. Um, but I don't think um, that that's going to be too much of a problem. I think uh, getting the businesses on board uh, as individuals and as independent traders will be a very good idea. So good luck. And uh, I look forward to the first meeting. I think you've picked up on a key point there, councillor, in that, you know, <clears throat> the businesses had to be constituted to a body to to attend the town centre management groups. And we're taking away that barrier now. Yeah. You know, all businesses in the town centre will be able to attend if they see so fit. Yeah, that's a good idea. Yeah. And uh, yeah, hopefully we can use Steve as well as town centre manager to liaise with people and to, to try and encourage them to get on board as well. I, I think we will do a lot of groundwork to ensure that the business community knows of these events before they're held, definitely. Okay, great. Okay, thank you very much, Chair. Thanks, Alan. Thanks. Uh, b before we move on to the, to the next speaker, and I think it was uh, Mike Adams, can, can I just say, I, I know that uh, Councillor Stenner has to go to a very urgent meeting tonight, so um, we've got Alan here. I'm sure he can answer all the questions. Uh, um, if Councillor Stenner, you, you do need to go, then, then feel free to, to leave us and we'll, we'll carry on in your absence. So um, thanks. If uh, I think Mike, you're the next one. Do you want to? Yes, I, I'm, I'm the next one, uh, Chair, uh, and I'll, I'll keep an eye on who uh, is indicating uh, after me. A very, very quick one, a technical one in a way, uh, Alan. Uh, two meetings a year for five town councils, unless we have a huge development somewhere, uh, and we get a sixth. So we're talking about 10 meetings a year at the moment. And hopefully, as you've answered, uh, Councillor Ellsbury, as soon as possible, we can be holding those face to face in appropriate uh, venues. But OK, we <coughs> have to see how that goes on. So you're confident uh, as, as a team arranging all of this, we can get through 10 useful meetings uh, in a year. I'm sure there will be some overlap as well, of course, from all the ideas. Uh, but hopefully not too much overlap, and then we, we will be having uh, different ideas from different uh, different areas within the borough, and uh, we can then use them against each other as they all move forward. So uh, welcome this uh, approach to do something different, and uh, hopefully we can all be involved when appropriate during that time. So not a specific question there, but just 
well done for going forward and uh, we all should be supporting this effort because our town centres need to see how they can properly envisage change for them. Thanks, Alan. Thanks, Councillor. I, I think inevitably there will be some um, repetition with, with some of the presentations when we're talking about training on IT issues, how to get the best use of Wi-Fi, etc. But mainly, you know, the agendas will be set on pertinent local issues. Oh, yes. Yeah, there we are. Thanks for that. Um, Councillor Sargent is next, Chair. Yeah, thank you. Yes, Councillor Sargent, Margaret here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hello, Alan. Hello. Um, a couple of questions, please. I think my first observation is this is wonderful. I think uh, uh, the whole setup needed dramatic change and it's good to see it happening. Um, my question is, why is it that um, it's only town centre um, councillors, ward councillors that are involved? Because not just the councillors, because it, it, it does affect the businesses going up to Penrail, up to the Upper Valley, because that is our town centre. Would they be encouraged to join your um, forum? I think that's a good question, Councillor. You, you know, with the town centre management groups, and we've tried not to stray too far away from that. There was a, a particular list of attendees that we had agreed, you know, and we'd agreed with all parties as to who those attendees should be, and they were the ones that were impacted on by um, by the town centre itself. And I think if we bleed that out too far, we may be in danger of diluting the effect of the groups to some degree. Okay. Um, could it be monitored, please? Yeah, and I think, you know, we're, we're saying loud and clearly in the report that we're going to pilot this for 12 months and yeah. there'll be some learning through that 12 months, which we can use to tweak the way that um, we take these groups forward, maybe changing the protocols, maybe changing the attendance list. Yeah. Okay. Maybe changing the presentations, you know, and the way we actually hold the the actual meetings, I think they just become a little bit staid and the business community themselves in those town centres felt that it wasn't advantageous for them to attend. And that's our primary goal here is to get yeah. those businesses I back in to that's, the fold. I think so that's can, a credit. I think that's so that we can build that relationship up with them. And that's the key to this, really. Um, my other question is on, you mentioned contents of agendas and so forth. Um, will there be talking about more to do with regeneration of the area in the sense of trying to get big businesses in? I think there'll be opportunities to put that on the agenda. Definitely, Councillor. Now, you know, in, in several towns, we've got a lot of momentum going forward with regeneration projects, whether they be bricks and mortar or whether they be inward investment. But, you know, the more we get the business community together, the more we can learn from them as to what other opportunities there are in other town centres that we can promote further afield for inward investment. Uh, can you take on board the fact that during the lockdown, there was nowhere in the county borough that we had uh, a Marx annexed, uh, a big department store. Now they they're not minor things when you have uh, when you're shopping, and we couldn't get to Cardiff, we couldn't get to Newport, mm. we couldn't get to Merthyr. Um, so I don't think it's um, would be wrong to try and pull some big businesses in if it, there's it, a possibility, because God forbid we have another lockdown. Um, the residents of our county borough are not being served that well. There's absolutely nothing wrong with being ambitious, but the retail landscape has changed enormously over the last yeah. couple of years, councillor. And the opportunity to bring those brand names in that you've mentioned is 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 small, to be honest yeah. with you. It's not just those brands. What I'm talking about oh. really is the ones that are not. There's a lot outside our borough that could be perhaps brought in so yeah, that people I, don't feel so cut off. 
And I think what's important here is the independent operators as well, because they're the ones who are the, exactly the, the life of the town centre. Should aim to be like, I mean, a Strathmore town centre is a credit to the borough, and, and if we had far more independence, you know, it would be good. And what's interesting with the independents, they're less susceptible to change often because decisions aren't making being made at HQ in London. You know, they, the decisions are being made locally by local That's people, right. by the owners themselves. So so we've got a real focus on supporting our independent retailers through these difficult times. Yeah, I'd like to I'd like to think of Philly Borough was going to end up at least one town be like Cowbridge. We're better than Cowbridge. <laughs> oh, better, of course. Mark, I've, gi I've given you an awful lot of rope here. You, you <laughs> Thank you for your time. You're a one-person one show. I've always seen you more, as the rumour is, as a Harvey Nicks person, but we won't go into that Oh, now. gosh, no. <laughs> um, oh, no. But, Definitely uh, not thank, me. Thank you so, so much for that, because, because they are important points. Thank uh, you. Thanks, Alan. Um, I, I think uh, Councillor Bob Owen is next on the list. Bob. Yeah, good evening all. Yeah, how do I follow that? <laughs> um, yeah, to give, mine is uh, sort of similar. My, it's more of a comment, really. Similarly to what uh, Mike was saying, Alan, regarding the meetings and 10 meetings. Are they going to be, I can't remember now because it's so long since we had town council group meetings, but are they going to be sort of, if, if it's a, a particular month, are we going to have the five of them? In one month, or are we going to sort of have, say, you know, Bargo, then Caffili, then Risca, you know, and then you come back then, so you're sort of technically having one nearly every month. That's one one thought. And secondly, if I can just say then, uh, with the fact that we, we're looking to bring in the business community, which I think is, is, is very good, um, opening up to the business community, that in all likelihood, perhaps the first one would be good to be an evening one because if we uh if we're going to want to get a, a, a bit of traction with the businesses uh shops and whatever and they may not be able to attend on a you, you know on a breakfast time meeting initially that's just a thought you could you'd be surprised how the promise of a bacon butty attracts attention <laughs> councillor we had really good attendance at the breakfast events because we put on catering and we'll do that, you know, with the first round of meetings as well, just to drum up, you know, the enthusiasm for them. Yeah. In terms of the programming, we've yet to detail that. And I think it's all about the resources internally. You know, there's a very small team that will be managing this. Um, there will be uh, the town centre manager with a couple of staff who have traditionally done the events in the town centres, they'll be called upon to not only do the town centre events, which will continue, but also to organise these events as well. So, yeah, looking at calendars, it makes a lot of sense if there's a, a an amount of repetition with the speakers to sort of clump them together quite closely so that they happen for each of the towns, you know, within a period of a month two months and then six months until they happen again in those same towns but you know that's still to be developed further okay so breakfast it is then you didn't oh, mention i'm, I'm the not saying you didn't that mention I, I, the I think at the beginning I think you make a fair point. Uh, and as I said yeah. earlier, I, I think it's down to my staff now to go out there and, and find out what the business community want and what's preferential to them. So I think we're going to be doing a little bit of networking before these events start to drum up, you know, enthusiasm, but also to find out what's best for them, whether it would be morning, you know, and by morning, I mean, eight till nine, not nine till 10, you know, these will be the, the yeah business events that we've held successfully sort of kicked off at about quarter to eight which meant the staff were there from half past six seven o'clock in the morning just setting up but you know we're willing to do that just to make sure that these events are successful yeah okay thank you very much alan thanks very much um i don't see any other hands up at all anybody else want to um um if i can just and uh, the fact that we, we're not going to be having uh, early in the year 
physical meetings together, making me wonder about who's going to do the catering for these bacon butties uh, <laughs> that they've had in the past. <laughs> So if, if you're in Risca, for, for instance, and uh, Bob will be involved, uh, who's going who's gonna to do the cooking? It's going to be awkward to have a yeah. virtual butty, isn't it? It is, yeah. <laughs> it will a bit, but uh, <laughs> there we go. We don't want this to generate any of the past uh, members, do we now? To, no, but, yeah, uh, we, we want some smiling people at, at that time of the morning. 100%, yes. But just picking up John. on that point. But, thank you. Just, oh, before, I, before you come in, Margaret, just, just picking up. So, oh, sorry. For, yeah, come. I, I just want to make one point. I, I think just picking up on that point because it's personal now. I, I suppose there well may well be um, catering establishments within within the business community that can actually provide that. So we're giving them a little bit of a boost as well. Um, I guess you got that in hand anyway, Alan, knowing how you plan these things. Yeah, um, Councillor Leonard Philippa, please come in. Yeah. Yeah. Hi. Thank you. Um, how have you got any kind of um? How do, how are you going to sell this to local businesses? How are, how are we going to promote this to our to our town centres? How and to our business people? How you know for them to be represented? Because obviously you're going to you're going to want you're going to want local businesses attending these breakfast clubs. Definitely, so you know that's the primary gonna... aim, councillor. And, and and I think there's a lot of legwork to be done by the team before these events start. As I've right. already alluded to, you know we've got to make them aware of the event got to make it attractive for them but giving yes. them a flavor of what they can get from it you know it's the networking element but it's also the learning element as well and the information sharing um I, I, and we modeled it very much on the business events that we've already held and those events were really well attended because of the amount of legwork that we did beforehand just making the business community aware of them you know, we've got all sorts of mechanisms for doing that these days. We've got boots on the ground, just going to the businesses in the town centre and talking to them, maybe leaflet dropping, but we've got social media, we've got our web page, we've got Caffili Business Club as well. You know, there's, I think there's 400 um, businesses, many of which are town centre businesses that we can use that as a platform to push this information out as well. Okay, we've got obviously we've got councillor pages on Facebook, and if we can promote it in any way, if you can yeah. give us, you know, uh, information that we can put forward to our communities to promote it uh, in any way, then 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 please forward us things because we would love our communities and our small businesses to get involved to, you know, to try and bring the town back up again. Uh, and I think that's a really good point, and that, that brings home another point, which is that we're not looking to alienate the local councillors. We need the local councillors to be working with us to promote these events. Yeah. yeah so yeah, thank definitely. you very much for the opportunity to to use your social media platforms. No problems. <laughs> thank you. Thanks. Uh, Margaret, is that a legacy hand? A, yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Oh, sorry, Mike. Yeah. Is that a legacy hand, Margaret, or do you want to come back in? Councillor Sergeant. Mm. Not sure. It did sure. go off Sorry, and it turned I back just on. Call me? I uh, yeah, my you hand had your hand up. Down. Yeah, but um, I think it must have been a legacy hand, so, so no problem with that. OK, um, is anybody else that, that, would, that would like to ask a question while, before we before we move on? OK, thank you, members. Just, if I, just to, just to summarise, I, I think it, it's clear, isn't it, that there is huge member support for this. Um, and I, I think, you know, I wasn't a prophetic statement when I said how excited we are about this at, at the beginning. So, you know, it's something I think that we're all very, very keen to support. Um, we're very, very conscious of the pressures that businesses are under, very, very conscious of the difficulties that High Street is facing. And I think it's critically important that we respond to this and are seen to respond to this yeah, in a positive way. And I think there's no doubt in my mind that, that, that the proposals that are being put forward tonight actually do that. I, I get quite, quite excited by the idea of, you know, business engagement and that kind of thing and, and the networking opportunities. Um, so, so I see it all you know, bod boding well for the future. Um, what did occur to me is that, that, that um, by just sticking to, to the one meetings with each a meeting for each of the town centres, perhaps there'll be an opportunity at some time to, to have a, a wider meeting where the, the several town centres come together. I imagine perhaps that's more in the future. But, you know, like a sort of AGM kind of thing. So you're going to really have that cross networking between between the groups. I don't know whether that's something you've considered at this stage, Alan, or it's further down the line. No, we have considered it. And I think particularly with the learning events where it's about training and people giving presentations on how best to 
take advantage of Wi-Fi in the town centre or how to build web pages, then it makes a lot of sense to, you know, give that presentation only once. Um, the difficulty there is getting the venue and, and, and choosing the venue, which could accommodate, you know, could be 100 plus businesses. Um, and that's where virtual events may come into their own. Yeah, I think that's a very, very important point, isn't it? I, I think that, you know, while while the lure of a bacon butty certainly works, you know, we are in a new world now. And I, and I think so many businesses, so many of us all function through Teams and Zoom. Um, quite frankly, that we're going to have a blend of this, I think, probably forever in the forever. future. Yeah, in, indeed. Um, OK, well, well, thank you. Thank you, members. So um, uh, coming to to the to uh, the the, um, the recommendations. OK, as you recall, uh, the recommendations on page 22 of the report, there are three one <clears throat> that um, members consider the, pro the proposal to trial an alternative model and recommend to cabinet a 12 month trial period with a revised format for the town centre management groups with a uh, Recommendation three two that a further report outlining the results of the trial period be considered after the trial period ends, allowing a decision to be taken at that stage on the preferred model of delivery. Um, so uh, can I have um, somebody to recommend that, please, a mover? I'll move. I'll second, I'll Jez Kirby. Thanks, thank, thanks, Jez. OK, fine. So um, as always, now we will have the, the voting box on the screens. Um, John, sorry, I haven't got anything on my screen again. It's me on the phone, Philippa. So I'm voting for. Thanks. I'm, I'm sure Mark will record that for you, Philippa. Thank you. That's noted. Thanks, Chair. That's carried unanimously, Chair. Ten votes for, uh, including the verbal um, vote from um, Councillor Leonard. Uh, no abstentions and no votes against. Thanks, Mark. A ringing endorsement, Alan. Thanks a lot. Thank you, Chair. So we move on to um, agenda item eight now, uh, and this is the housing revenue account for the budget monitoring period five. And I'm going to hand that over to um, Councillor Lisa Phipps, who is the Cabinet Member for Housing. Uh, over to you, Lisa. Thank you very much, Chair. Members, the purpose of the report in front of you is to inform you of the projected position for the housing revenue account for the 2021-2022 financial year, based on the income and expenditure movements of the first five months of the year. The housing revenue account capital programme which is predominantly funded by the housing revenue account is also included within the report. The housing revenue account has a projected underspend of £1.8 million for the end of the 2021-2022 financial year, which represents about 3.6% of the total housing revenue account budget. This is, as I have pre previously indicated, based on the income and expenditure patterns for the first five months of the year, together with knowledge of the service from the respective managers. The main variances are summarised within the report and full financial details are provided at Appendix 1. Members are requested to note the contents of the report to ensure that they are informed of the financial position of the housing revenue account. Leslie Allen, the Principal Group Accountant for Housing, is available should members have any questions from the report. Thank you, Chair. Thanks, Lisa. Yeah, um, Leslie, it, it's over to you if you want to um, just take us through the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, this is the second report um, of five HRA budget monitor reports that will be reported to this committee throughout the year. Um, not surprisingly, the main area of underspend is linked to the productivity level on the capital programme as a result of the COVID-19 restrictions, which has delayed the majority of the capital programme, particularly the WHQS programme and the post asset management programme that follows it. Obviously, operatives have been unable to enter tenants' homes. Other staff are also reprioritised elsewhere. There's been issues around staff self-isolating and issues with contractor resources, as an example. 
Therefore, as we progress throughout the year, it's likely we will probably see further savings due to some of the programmes not being able to start as intended. Um, but this could be offset by the increases in the cost of material prices nationally, which I'm sure members are aware of, and the supply issues, which are likely to affect deliveries, etc. So this could impact um, on, on the savings that's currently being projected. But as I mentioned, there's, there's another three reports um, due to be um, presented to committee during the year. So anything, um, any variances will be reported um, going forward for that. Could I, could I also ask members to note um, 5.1.2 and 5.1.3 of the report? Um, we do intend to commit just over a million pounds of the 1.8 million pound under spend. Um, £35,000 on extending the IT support of our current provider during our transition to the new IT system. Um, and then a million pounds to address the riverbank issues behind Montclair Avenue in Blackwood, which Cabinet agreed on the 29th of September. Um, and if you can further note also on 5.7.4, the report, in the past, um, any surpluses have been automatically earmarked towards achieving WHQS as a priority. And obviously, as we near the end of this programme in December, we should now reallocate any surpluses towards our next priority, which is increasing housing supply. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Leslie. Um, OK, so um, questions from members. I believe Councillor Williams, you had one, didn't you, Walter? <clears throat> uh, yes, Chair. Uh, thank you, Leslie, for the report. Um, 5.3.1. It says part of the underspend is associated with office related costs such as stationery, photocopy and post mainly as a result of offices not being occupied. Do you think in the future this is the way this is going to be working? I would suspect so, uh, Councillor Williams. Obviously, um, we're still waiting on um, the policy on returning to offices uh, in the future, so we just we just have to monitor it and just record it as a saving for now. Um, as and when we decide what's happening with returning to offices, we can adapt the budgets accordingly then. And if we need to reduce the budgets, we will obviously do that. OK, thanks so much. Do we have any other questions at the moment? I can't see any hands up. Mike, can you see anybody? No, I'm looking uh, at the moment, Chair. Yes, here we are. Councillor Sergeant is uh, Oh, OK, yeah. Just just thanks Joanne Sergeant. Yep. she's been taking notice. I promise to keep this one short. <laughs> um, the IT uh, changes that are having to be done, can you tell me if this money should be taken out of the transformation budget as opposed to this budget? It seems to me that this is a, um, a county-wide issue with IT. And I'm not sure. I just need that a little bit of explanation there, please. Yes, yeah, certainly, Councillor Sergeant. Um, unfortunately for the HRA, we are ring fenced. Therefore, we cannot use any of the corporate funding for any of the services within the housing um, revenue account. So any new IT systems or anything that we buy from the HRA has to come from the HRA, which is predominantly the rent from our tenants. We cannot use any of the corporate funding for HRA, that's the reason for the ring fence. So, and likewise, you know, council tax or, or corporate funding can't use anything from the HRA. There's a definite line um, with them. Thank you very much. Thanks, Margaret. OK, right. Um, no other indications, Chair? No, no, thanks. Um, I suppose to some extent that it, it is fortunate that it's HRA account and therefore ring fenced that, that that the funding is available to spend within within that within within housing um, um, and and the rollover doesn't you know there is there is no possibility that it won't be rolled over which which is excellent. One of the questions I just wanted to ask and, and it's not necessarily linked to finance but it's a financial report and, and it's the outcomes which are interesting as well and I think it's worth just just putting that down as a, as a question. Um, Clearly, a lot of the of the work that the the, the underspend has been caused because of our inability to be able to um, com complete the uh, the WHQS program, um, and uh, we will understand that. But, but I wonder if there's anybody here tonight who could just give us a clue as to where we are with the WHQS program, because you know we have had these delays. There are clearly works outstanding. It would be good, I think, at this moment just to be able to outline where we stand with that particular significant program. I can give you a, a brief update. Um, oh, thanks. Yeah. Well. 
Um, yeah, we the in-house, um, the internal works for the in-house have been completed, um, which is great news. We obviously have got till December 21 to complete. Um, we have about five internal properties um, remaining, which are down to a contractor, so not the in-house um, team. And we have about 28 external properties uh, to complete. So we are we are literally 99.6% through the programme. Um, and we, we do intend to complete by December 2021. Okay, and, and December 2021 is the deadline, I think I'm right in saying? That's the official deadline. Obviously, it was December 2020. Yeah. and Welsh Government extending it due to the pandemic. So yeah, that's our official deadline. Well, that, that's really encouraging. And, and, and I've said this before, but I, I think we want to extend our gratitude to everybody involved in that programme. It's been so significant and so important as far as the local authority is concerned, but, but critically, it's been important for the residents. And, and I think that's been delivered during a very difficult situ de de difficult set of circumstances. And I'm delighted to know it's all going to be finished. I'm sure everybody else is too. So, so thanks very much for that, Leslie. Um, if there are no other questions, then uh, I think we will... Um, it is only for noting this report. So, John, I, if I, I can just make a quick oh my, uh, sorry, I quick comment. Yeah. I've actually been involved in the last couple of days with some of the officers still involved with WHQS. And uh, even though we're coming to the end, their responses have been so, so quick. It's amazing. Um, I've got a little bit more questioning for them because of a bit of a confusion in, with one external uh, worker property. But uh, yeah, they're answering as quickly as it's possible. Yeah, I, I, that, that's, that's all good. Yeah, thanks. I, I, it is encouraging because I know that, that with these larger contracts, you sometimes get tail off at the end of them, particularly with contractors, because they're having to move on to other business and uh, other works. Uh, and I think that's clearly been addressed in the way it's been managed. So, so you know, uh, an, another example of how effective you've all been. That that's that's absolutely superb. Okay, so unless there are any other questions, then uh, I think we'll move on to the final item on the agenda tonight, which is uh, uh, agenda item nine which is the George Street Rio Wars in Kumkan. And I think it's Lisa's going to just take us through this somewhat unique um, report going through. Thanks. Yes, thank you very much, Chair. The Rio retaining walls and party steps to the 30 council and 16 privately owned properties at 1 to 46 George Street in Kumkan are in an advanced state of disrepair and require renewing as soon as possible in order to ensure the safety of residents in the wider community and the integrity of the housing stock. A comprehensive reconstruction scheme has been developed and funding has been identified for the works required to the council owned homes. However, these walls and steps cannot be renewed in isolation from the walls and steps of the adjoining private sector properties. The total cost of the scheme is approximately one million pounds of which the housing revenue account will be responsible for £660,000 in relation to the proportion of council tenanted properties. The remainder of the scheme relates to the proportion of the private owners and will cost approximately £325,000. Approval is therefore being sought to deploy approximately £352,000 of available private sector housing capital monies for the cost of reconstruction works to the private sector properties by way of a group repair scheme. Members, you are being asked tonight to approve the recommendations set out at point three of the report. Thank you, Chair. Thanks very much. Um, and I think we've got Fiona here tonight to just talk to the report. So over to you, Fiona. Thank you, Chair. I, I suppose uh, Councillor Phipps has outlined the main um, priorities and reasons for the report. And as you mentioned, it is quite a unique scenario in the, in the interdependence, I suppose, between the condition of the council properties and the private ones. The properties are all four bed family homes and we don't have a significant number of four bed accommodation within the borough. So most of our four bed properties are in high demand, but these particular ones are significantly lower demand than most of the others due to the design and the lack of usable garden, because obviously four bedroom homes are targeted at um, households with young families and the condition of the rear gardens and the disrepair of the walls is, is discouraging residents from them. We also obviously have obligations in relation to the tenants that are in the properties at the moment. The retaining walls are in an advanced state of disrepair and a lot of them have had various ad hoc structures added to them at various points in time. 
to try and improve the quality of the garden, but that has undermined the stability of the walls. Um, I did include some photographs in the report because I think they say a picture paints a thousand words and you can see from the, the photographs, um, it gives you an indication of the design of the properties and the, the problems that we're experiencing at the moment. It was originally anticipated that WHQS would be the opportunity to carry out a wholesale um, regeneration program within the walls to the council properties. But once we started doing the investigation and preparatory works, it was soon increasingly obvious that it wasn't feasible to do it within the WHQS program because of the scale and complexity of the scheme that was required um, and our inability to achieve that scheme in isolation from the private sector properties as well. So we did some minimal works. We sorted out some drainage issues and did some safety works, but we've then had to postpone them um, from WHQS as acceptable fails due to timing and remedy. Um, whilst we undertook a larger proposal um, and incorporating the private sector ones. So you'll see from the photographs that it is increasingly urgent that we address these problems. Um, we do have an obligation as a landlord to undertake repairs from a safety point of view and in relation to our tenancy obligations. And you can see in the report we have had previous instances of having to remove some walls within that street um, and have them rebuilt and we've very recently had to take two more down and we've had to batten those the, the ground back whilst we wait for the outcome of this um, report because of the need to do a comprehensive um, regeneration program. So the scheme has been designed by our colleagues in building consultancy. I've provided a location plan as well so that you can see the mix of public and, and private sector and it really highlights the fact that these walls are integrated and that we can't really do, do one without the other. So in order to encourage the full participation of private owners, which is essential for us in order to achieve our obligations in relation to the council owned properties, we think that we would inevitably need um, financial assistance to those private owners in the form of grant aid. So the report is proposing to offer the private owners 100% grant aid to get their buy-in. Um, as Councillor Phipps has mentioned, there is capital funding available. We did have got underspends in the private sector housing renewal capital budgets and some balances. And this is in part due to some of the restrictions in work last year due to the, uh, the COVID situation. So the budget is available for us and we're seeking your approval to enable us to make quite urgent progress in progressing the scheme both for public sector benefits and for the private residents will obviously obtain a consequential benefit but that's not the key rider and reason for us for progressing the scheme so if thanks anyone so much, got questions yeah thanks very much fiona I, I don't know whether you're able at all to share your screen with, with one of the with the one of the images on it i think that might be useful for anybody viewing this at a later stage are you in a position to be able to do that for us tonight just quickly I can if you bear with me a moment while I bring the report up and I will try, try to and put you on the in. spot. But, um, so, uh, let's have a look. I'm trying to work out my appendices of which one <laughs> will be the right one for you. Yes, I mean, they, they were very, they, they were very interesting. I suppose those of those of us who have had the opportunity of seeing them, I mean, they, yeah. they did paint a picture and um, I think it would be useful if that's if that's possible. Yeah. Bear with me then. I, I, I've got a question on, on one of the pages. Uh, which I'll ask Fiona when she's got it. OK, thanks, Mike. Yeah, bear with me and I shall try to find the correct one for you. If it's going to let me. <laughs> there. Are you able to see that? Yes. Yeah, so yeah. Yeah, thanks. that's the yeah. rear elevation of the property. That's so you right. can see that they are constructed on the side of the mountain. So inherently by their design, they do discourage some residents because it is a little bit of a, an adventure to get down mm. into the rear gardens. Yeah. Um, this highlights the, the terrace itself. It doesn't give a good indication of the, the garden walls, but it gives you a little bit of scope. This is a typical situation in relation to these the steps are actually shared 
at the oh, moment. And you can see that the one on the right hand side has been maintained reasonably well. <coughs> the one on the left, less so, but the steps themselves yeah. are in an extremely poor condition and the retaining walls on either side need to be reconstructed as well. Um, this is a an example of a poorer one. You can see that the strength has gone from, from the walls themselves. The garden clearly hasn't been used for a significant period of time. Um, and the way that the gardens are designed, you have a very large retaining wall shared between two properties and then a set of share, steps shared between yeah. another two properties. So even though we're saying about costs per pair, when you look at them, you can't mm -hmm. even really work on just a pair because the walls and the steps don't relate to the same pair, if that makes sense. I wanted to give you that one because it's an example of one where we've done works and it's worked well in respect of the upper steps, but that isn't itself in enough if the lower the lower garden hasn't actually been maintained and supported. So again, some pictures of the walls, some better than others. Again, showing stones that have removed, and we've done a number of patch repairs to keep these walls going whilst waiting for the WHQS program. And unfortunately, as we say, the WHQS program hasn't addressed it. And if you look at that, that's an example where someone has tried to build up the back garden. There's a couple of examples there to enable to make it more usable for the children. But that has further undermined the walls themselves. Um, that was in the summer, so that's an example of the typical greenery that's available to those properties. Um, and this this pair of walls um, encompass two that we've taken down in the last month or so. And if you look at the garden next to it, which is a private property, you will see the construction that they have put next to it, which obviously if we take the wall down, mm. um, we significantly undermine the adjoining gardens and the, the consequences for that. So it, it gives you an example of why we feel we need to be able to address them all in one go. Um, again, th there's a number of photographs. I've just put a number in there just to give you an indication of the extent and range. Stop at that one. It, <laughs> it, it was that when uh, Fiona, I was going to, is that our vehicle and we've been doing some of that work you've just outlined or was it somebody, one of the private uh, householders no, perhaps? Having no, that was us when on? we were trying, yeah. we were actually trying to get the properties in a condition where we could go in and do the drainage work and the investigation. So we actually went ah, in yeah. um, to try and ex establish the extent of what was required. OK, then, thanks. OK, I, that's probably enough for you. That's the ones we've had to take down. And that's where they're left now waiting the result of the uh, the report. I think that was the critical one for me, Fiona, was it, just, mm. just to show that the, the level of um, sort of work that needs to be done. I mean, clearly that's had to be battered back to keep it stable until the wall's built. But um, you know, it wouldn't take much for any of those to erode to that point. And it, it, it's just really an example of justifying a further justification why, why this expenditure is needed. So. So thanks very much for that. Yeah, we can, we can. Yeah, and if you look at that, you can see that where we've taken it down, we haven't been able to go all the way across because if we go any further, we're going to undermine mm. next door, which is leaning. Absolutely. Um, yeah, yeah. So we can't yeah. do the one without the other. Indeed, yeah. and you can see the whole thing has to be done in one fell swoop. Yes, thank you so much for that. Lovely. Yeah, you, you can you can take those back off again. Thanks very much. OK, well, uh, yeah, I hope members you, you found that useful. I know we've all looked at the reports, but I, I think it's useful to see it and also for people who are viewing this at a later stage to see why we have to take some of these decisions. So, um, Mike, you've asked some questions. Are there any further questions from members at all this evening? None indicated so far, Chair. OK, all right, that's fine. OK, uh, well, thank you then, Fiona. So um, the, the recommendations uh, are on page 45 uh, and the top of page 46 of the PACs. Um, it is recommended that in addition to the housing revenue account funding, the works of the council properties require financial support uh, be offered to homeowners at numbers 1 to 46 George Street for the renewal of the rear wall, retaining wall and steps and associated works in the form of a 100 percent grant and funding for inclusion of the private sector a property in the scheme should be made available from the existing private sector housing balances. I don't know if there's another one on this. Forgive me, I think there is. And that members endorse this recommendation. So, um, to say we, we don't have any more hands up. So, can I have somebody to, to, to move the recommendation, please? Uh, 
I move, Chair. Chair's Kirby. Thank you, Jez. OK, and somebody to second. Happy to Thanks, second, Chair. Chair. Thanks, Mike. OK, right. Um, so the voting form will be popping on our screens in a minute or two. Again, John, Philip Energy, um, just to say I vote for the recommendations. Thank you. Thanks, Philip. I'm sure Mark will pick that up. Thank you. Yeah, voted, Chair. Yes, that's carried unanimously, Chair. Nine votes for, including Councillor Leonard on the phone, uh, no votes against and no abstentions. Thank you very much, Mark, uh, and thank you, members. That uh, brings this meeting to a conclusion. Thank you all for attending. Uh, I look forward to seeing you next time and have a good evening. Good night. Do, do we need to?